Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be doing our contrarian betting breakdown for UFC Paris. And for those that have not seen this before, again, it's not like your usual betting breakdown. We're not really going over what I think is going to happen, or what I even think are particularly good values, given what I think of the fights. All we're trying to do is figure out where the public is, where the kind of cutesy narratives are, and then just basically fade them. <laughs> the, idea, the idea is is essentially that groupthink, especially in UFC and MMA, is so strong that usually the side which is most uh, represented in the in the narrative streets is that which is incredibly overvalued. So uh, being able to think about UFC this way uh, hopefully will translate to your ability to think about other betting markets this way whether it be sports betting, whether it be the stock market, whether it be anything. Um, and as I've said many times, it's very difficult, in my opinion, to be able to beat like a 40 cent VIG in MMA or whatever they're they're making you play into um, just on knowledge. Um, but if you could add in a little bit of understanding of where the psychology of the markets are going, I think that that kind of puts you in a better spot. And as I've mentioned in UFC, uh, as I've mentioned before, UFC is particularly suited to this type of analysis because even though it is a sport which is ripe with chaos, it's 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 human nature to try to create a script for something that is not that scriptable. Um, the idea of, oh, XYZ has to win this way, so they're going to do this, and if that doesn't work, then this is going to happen. It's just not that easy. And, and even if it were, if it was that easy a story to tell, I promise you it would be completely overvalued. So what we, do, what we do is identify that which is most recommended, that which is most logical, that which is most you know conducive to a good story you could tell a 10-year-old, and then just fade it. And we've done really, really well with this. Uh, but forget how well we've done as far as profit loss. It The, the most important thing is to hope train you guys to, to think about things in this way. Uh, again, I've had very, you know, great success in a lot of different businesses using, I mean, and this is the ability to think this way is responsible for most of it, if you want to know the truth. Anyway, uh, let's just get started. So uh, let's let's go over the rules. Uh, we are going to be betting one thing every fight. Uh, and of course, that's not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care. We're also going to be betting one unit on every fight. And that, of course, is the not the best money management system in the world either, but we don't care. And for us, one unit is going to be $180, 10 times high. Good luck. Uh, and again, I always think it's healthy for people when they give out their plays and what they're betting to actually say how much they're betting. I know I know, everybody's unit sizes are different and all this stuff, and everybody's hung up on these units. But I, I don't know. I just think it's healthy if someone's going to come up and recommend something that they're going to actually bet it to tell you exactly how much it is. It puts a little context into your recommendations. Um, the other thing, which I like to have fun with, is that we are going to presume since we're being contrarian, that uh, pretty much we're going to lose every single bet on the card uh, until the main event. So we're going to need the main event to get all our money back. So there's a 14 fight card. We're going to be betting, what, 13 of them. And then we're going to presume we're going to lose all 13. And then the 14th one better get our money back. So we have to bet something getting at least 13 or 14 to one in the main event. And that's always a fun sweat. And again, I am putting money where my mouth is to help train you guys to think this way. We're going to what? 180 times 14, which is almost this balance. So we're going to empty the sports betting clip in the MMA streets uh, just for you guys and betting stuff that is probably pretty awful. But we're doing it for the cause. Balaji Oki versus Chris Duncan. All right. Let's just start with this one. So everybody kind of agrees that that Oki has, you know, he's a physical specimen. He's got power, things like that. But Chris Duncan does have experience and and, uh, and he is actually one of the kind of more popular underdogs now uh, this week. There are a couple we'll get into. So I, I think essentially that any bet on Chris Duncan is probably bad. Uh, it's just like too, I don't know, everybody's like just too on this on this on this play. They've heard of him a little bit more. And some of these kind of foreign fighters have just kind of failed in these spots. So people love just just taking this dog shot. And, and, and so I think the Duncan is kind of the square side, actually. And the thing about Oki is one thing that people are agreeing is that if Oki wins, it's going to be by KO, you know, whether it be first round or second round uh, knockout. 
So the only thing I think you can really bet here, which we're going to bet, we have two choices. One is is Oki by decision or Oki by sub. Now, the, the thing is, is that I've heard that Duncan could possibly go for takedowns. And as you guys know from following the, the stream, I love betting the opponent by sub in those spots where one other when where the opponent is supposed to be going for the takedowns. Because once it gets to the ground, anything's possible. And the only thing I would say is that if, in fact, I am going to take a shot. Oh, I got to pause this for a second. Hold on a second. What I was going to say is before I um, go and bet on Oki that by sub, something stupid like that, I'd like to make sure that he at least has one sub on his resume. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to bet him by decision. So let's just take a look. And I still might bet him by decision. Let's take a look here. TKO, TKO. All right, he does have a sub in 2001. But, ooh, it is a guillotine also. But I don't know. Let's take a look at the odds here. Right, by sub is plus 1,600. I mean, what do you think? What, what do you think of Oki beating him up and then Duncan going for a, a, a panic takedown? And then Oki snatching up the guillotine at plus 1,600. You down? Let's do it. Now, we're not going to not gonna let us bet this right now because uh, drafting doesn't like Zoom, but we're definitely going to fire it up into the, into, the, uh, into the pad, and then we will bet as soon as we log off. All right, so we're already off to a good start 0-1 here. All right, Noah Cornoli versus Jacqueline Cavalcante. For those of you who have been following me, I've actually... Uh, I'm a big fan of hers, Cavalcante, for no other reason than than she was very very nice to me and my daughter when we came out to to uh, the Apex to to uh, to watch the fights a few weeks ago. Um, very sweet, uh, sweet sweet girl, and she had her family and her friends were really really awesome. Uh, but uh, getting a little bit too much too much love here. Um, I've, I've heard lots of confidence in her in this fight. Nora Cornoli. I don't know. She is French. So I don't know. I was expecting to hear a little more from her, you know, that maybe she gets kind of, because I think that she got a, a favorable decision against Jocelyn Edwards or something like that. But I'm still getting like all the Cavalcante love here. So we are going to go, boy, should we do this? Should we go against our friend here and take Cornoli? Yeah, I guess we have to because. We, we have to be contrary and we have to stay with what with what we believe. Now, the other thing I could do, I'll tell you what else I could do. One bit of narrative that we've heard is that Cavalcante is going to keep this at range and be technical. What I have not heard is any Cavalcante inside the distance. Oh, that's rough. That's definitely rough. That's so rough. That it just might happen. Cavalcante by sub plus 2,500? Ooh. With Nora Cornoli maybe going for takedowns? All right, let's not let's not get carried away too fast here. Let, let, let's, let's just play her inside the distance. Let's not go too nuts. So, so Cavalcante by KO or sub plus 600 for 180. I like it. All right. Uh, Daniel Barres versus Victor Altamirano. Uh, very easy fight, people have said. Barres is going to pressure early. And if Altamirano can survive that, uh, he's probably going to take over late. So what does that mean? It means you cannot bet Barres early. And you cannot bet Altamirano by decision or late. All you can do is either play Altamirano early or maybe even Barres by decision. So let's take a look. We let's take a look at Alta Murano. Let's just look at just him inside the distance for openers. Well, first let actually first let's look at Barras by decision. So Barras by decision is plus two fifteen. That doesn't even sound that great. Maybe it's such a bad price. It's like forced to win. Let's take a look at Alta Murano like inside here. Alta Murano inside looks like. Plus 425? Hmm. 
as my friend uh, Lou Betcha says, this one is larger. So this one is does pay more, I should say. So maybe Alta Murano inside the distance plus 425. But the problem is that also accepts some of the late, you know, Alta Murano late stuff. So I think we're just going to go back to Barres by decision. I think that's that's the one that has the that makes the least amount of sense. So that's what we're playing. Okay, moving on. We have Aline Perez versus Daria K. And you know, Aline Perez is has the big grappling edge. Okay. Um, and the only thing that's keeping everybody from playing her is just this natural, you know, thought that that female favorites are just no good. But as what's in John Kelly, he's a really super sharp uh uh analyst, pointed out, um if you bet on all of the female underdogs in the last year or whatever, you would be down a lot. So it's actually just kind of another illusion. So really what you're supposed to do is actually bet these favorites. Um, so how do you do this? Aline Perez getting takedowns and subs and things like that. That seems to be the traditional thought is that either she gets maybe a sub or maybe a decision late so the one thing that's really contrarian, if you want to try, is maybe Perez by KO. So Perez by KO plus 450, that seems just good enough to be just awful enough for us to play. Okay, moving on. Taylor Lapalus versus Vince Morales. So very everybody completely agrees with this one. Lapalus is low volume. He's not a finisher, but he's just better everywhere. And he's just going to win this decision in kind of a boring fight. So what we're going to do, of course, is play Lapalus in round one. Let's see. Lapalus round one. Well, I don't know whether it's going to be TKO or submission. That I'm not that good at. But Lapalus round one plus 700. Let's go. That one's easy. All right. Uh, Ludovic Klein versus Roosevelt Roberts. Um. Ludovic Klein basically set up fight for him. He can win this fight however he wants, by KO, by sub, whatever. So we can't bet him inside the distance, not in a million years. What we can do, we do one of two things. One, one is just as gross as the other, but we could play Klein by decision or, oh goodness, we could just play Roberts. I don't think anybody's playing him. Ugh, but I just can't do this 300 VIG. It's just, it just, it's just, I don't know. It offends my senses. So we're going to go with Klein by decision for 180 plus the 200. Okay, moving on. Umar Sai versus Dawoon Jung. Again, Umar Sai, physical specimen, French, I think. Uh, basically a setup fight. Just going to take him down and just finish him in the first round. So what can you not bet? One more side in the first round. You can't bet him by sub. You can't bet him by KO. It's the same kind of idea as Klein. What you can do with Sai is either, well, you could play him in round two. Like Umar Sai in round two you could play. But aside from that, it's either Sai in round two, Sai by decision, or Jung straight up. And we look at this again, the problem with with straight up is you have a dollar fifty. Well, this isn't actually that bad. Ugh, just terrible. These money line playing these money lines like this with this kind of vig, it just makes no sense to me. So we're going to go with either side by decision, which is plus two twenty five, which isn't bad, or we're gonna play him in round two. What does round two look like? Ooh, plus three fifty. Hmm. So plus 350 or by this plus 350 is as, as Lou said is larger than plus 225. So we are going to go Psy round two or one eighty. Really hope I come up with something in the main event. Cause this is a disaster. All right. Uh, Ian Kutalaba versus Ivan Urslan. Um, Ian Kutalaba with the terrible fight IQ. That's what I've heard. Um, 
His chin is suspect. But it's supposed to be a sloppy fight. I'm seeing all this love coming in on the Ursuline, so we are just going to have to take Kutalaba. Um, how this fight is going to go, I, I literally have no idea. This is probably the worst fight to be contrarian on because there's really, I guess most people are taking Ursland, but I'd like to have a little more, you know, sexiness in the pick. Like I'd like people to know exactly how it's going to happen, which I am not seeing. Okay. You know what? I, for the most part, it's Ursland by KO. So that's what you can't play. How about Ursland by sub? I mean, you could do that. You could always play, you listen, Ursland by decision is going to be played a little bit just in case this fight's sloppy. So you can't do that. So you could play Ursulan by sub if you want, or Kutalaba straight up. So what we're going to do is we're going to play Kutalaba unless Ursulan has actually a sub in his repertoire. So let's just take a look. I just want to see it one time, and then I'll believe it. KO, 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 KO. Uh, he only has this one sub in 2018, so we're not going to do that. So we're just going to take, I don't know, Kutalaba minus the 105. It's it's dumb. But the rules are we have to play everything every fight, so we're just going to do this. All right. Uh, Ferris Zayam versus Matt Frivola. This is pretty damn easy for me. You have Frivola, who's going to be more aggressive. He's going to try to maybe either go for the first round KO or get the wrestling going. He's got all the upside, Okay. If anybody's going to be finishing this fight, it's going to be him. And if Zayam wins this fight, it's going to be a technical decision. So those are the things that you can't bet. All you could do is play Zayam inside or maybe Frivola by decision. Um, so let's take a look at what these things look like. Uh, okay, let's pull this up. So Zayam, first of all, Frivola by decision is plus 250. What about Zayam? Oh my goodness. Can I do this? Can I play Zayam by sub? Like the idea that Frivola goes for takedowns and Zayam gets a sub? Well, it's either going to be the greedy Zayam by sub or just Zayam inside plus 225. I guess we have to see. Let's see what Zayam has. Please don't have any subs because I'd rather not play it. Let's see. Ferris Zayam. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, lost by submission. He's got one sub here and then a loss by submission. He loses by sub more than anything else. So uh, we're just going to play him inside the distance. Where are we? Uh, winning method. Uh, Zion inside plus two twenty five. Who's doing that? Nobody. All right, moving on. We have Morgan Charrier versus Gabrielle Miranda. In a in, in a weird twist, the the easiest thing you could play here is Miranda by sub because that's really the only way he's winning, or so people would say. So you can't bet that. Okay. Um. Sherry A, people are just, you know, pretty sure he's going to win. Um, But they're not exactly sure how he's going to win. I, I don't know. This is, this again, this is a tough one. I can't bet, bet Miranda plus the money line because the $200 vague or whatever it is. And I'm not betting Miranda inside, you know, just uh, by decision because I'm not a psycho. So it's got to be something with, with, uh, with Sherry A. Boy, this this could be another one. Can we get away with? Can we play Charrier by sub? I mean, you get Miranda going for takedowns, but then Charrier getting a guillotine or something like that. So this is what we got to do. I mean, it's it's either got to be again Charrier by easy, easy decision plus two forty, or Charrier by sub. Same thing. We'll go to the thing. I just want a little bit of support for Charrier's ability to get a sub. Anything. KO, KO, KO division. Okay, so no subs. No, no subs since 2018. So it's not going to happen. 
What about like a round two or something like that? That could be our one of our, our go-tos again. Sherry a round two plus 300? We should just take the free money, right? And play Sherry a round one. This is another one which is a terrible, terrible way to be contrarian. It's got to be one of these, right? I guess we'll just play Sharia by decision. So that's like really totally boring and no one's going to do it, I guess. So Sharia by decision plus 240 for 180. Moving on. Uh, Kevin Jusset versus Brian Battle. I'm pretty sure I know what I want to do here. Um, so Brian Battle is the much more exciting fighter. Um, and Jusset, you know, he's certainly technical. Uh, much more of just a regular striker. And Brian Battle's been, been in exciting fights before. So I think people are mostly playing Battle. And if they're playing Battle, they're probably inclined to do something with inside the distance. So you probably shouldn't play Battle at all. But the thing is, is that I am seeing a lot of Juset love of the real sharp handicappers now. So what does this mean? What this means is that what you can't bet is you set money line. And you really can't bet battle inside. So what you could do is either play you set inside or battle by decision. And I think that you set inside is probably the sharp play that can't win. Um, I will say this, like you set by sub. I mean, correct me if my information is inaccurate, but he has two wins in the UFC and UFC and one of them is by sub in the first round. Um, I don't know why he is plus 20, you know, 20 to one to win by sub. Why battle is plus 450 to win by sub, but we are going to try it. Ouch. Am I that greedy? Why can't I, why can't I just play? Wait, how bad is it to just play him inside the distance and get, get the KOs if that's where it comes from? You get plus 500. I mean, what's wrong with that? All right, let's look at his, his career a little bit more. Did you set? I'm really just going to play the 20 to 1. That's it. So he's only, you know, he does only have the one sub. A couple of decisions. So let's 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 be let's be a little wimpy. We'll just play him inside the distance for 180. Boy, oh boy, you you guys really are in for a in for a, a big night of losing. All right, so this one, I I know exactly what I'm doing here. This is this is a disaster. Uh, I announced this when I was talking about my uh about the um when I did my DFS breakdown. I, I this has been I in this one. So Joe Anderson Brito versus William Gomez. So Brito is an animal. Okay, he goes for the finish. He's kind of low volume. Sort of, but only because he's been killing people so much. He hasn't had a chance to put on the big volume. He just has such an edge in physicality over Gomez. The thing, though, about Gomez is that he is very technical, and he's very evasive, and he can be very frustrating. So he could possibly pose problems to Joe Anderson Brito, but if he wins, I mean, it's, that's the way he's going to do it. He's going to get a French decision because he is French and it's going to be at home and it'll be a boring decision. So that you can't bet. And you certainly can't bet Brito inside. So the only two things you could do are the semi-psycho, Joe Anderson Brito by decision plus 215, or, or, what we are going to bet, and that's going to be Gomez inside, plus 900. Let Joe Anderson Brito go crazy. Let him get tired. Let Gomez take him down and let Gomez sub him. If, again, if I had any real cojones, I'd bet him by sub. But right now, it's just going to be Gomez inside plus the 900. So we're 0-12, which is, I mean, I'm really excited about this. Let's go on to Imava versus Brandon Allen. Brandon Allen, very popular kind of underdog here. Everybody knows him. He's won 100 in a row, and he's getting 2-1. to one. 
So there's just no way I can play him. Okay. I mean, listen, I think he's a great bet, but what do I care? But what do I know? Um, Imavov, kind of a, a striker, point fighter, sort of. Uh, what people are not going to be expecting, again, is uh, an Imavov finish. So that is kind of what we're going to do. And again, if I had any, if I had anything in me, I would bet him by sub. Okay. And what's cool about this is that if you look at his record, he does have a couple of subs on his record. Um, I actually saw one of them live, I think. Oh, it wasn't a, man, it wasn't a sub. It was a TKO. I know he took him down, but so he finished him over there. All right, so let's just play him inside the distance, okay? Imavov inside. plus the 175. Okay. All right. So let's now review like they do in Family Feud. Let's review the atrocious uh, plays that we've made so far that we are now going to have to make it up. So uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how we're doing this, but Oki by sub, that's pretty funny. Cavalcante by sub, that's even funnier. Byron's by decision, okay. Maybe that's not the worst play in the world, but it's got to be pretty bad. Perez by TKO. I mean, if she's going to win it all, it's going to be by sub, right? Or get a you know grinding decision. So this is this is long. This is gone. Lapalus boring decisionator. We're going to play him in round one. How? Well, we'll see. Klein can do whatever he wants, so maybe it's going to be by decision plus two hundred. But Omar Sy, he can do whatever he wants. We won't play him by decision just to diversify our terrible play portfolio and put him in round two. Kutalab, again, this is just basically a coin flip. I, that This is nothing. Uh, Frivola is where all the action is going to come from in this fight. If Zion wins, it's going to be by decision. So, of course, we're going to play him by TK or sub. Uh, Cherrier could basically do whatever he wants with Miranda. I don't know how this is going to get to the distance, but if it does, plus 240 for us. Again, if I had it in me, I would play Juset by sub. Why don't I just bet 90 on TKO and 90 on sub instead of doing that? All right, same thing. I'll leave that to you guys. Gomis by KO or sub is like a lock. It has so little chance to win that it just has to win. And then Imavov again, uh, you know, he's more of a point fighter. I don't expect much of a finish here, so we're gonna we're gonna try for it. So we're 0 13 going into the main event. And unfortunately, with the main event, we usually have to back into what we what we can bet because we need to have something with at 14 to 1 odds. And usually in a fight like this, we're gonna have to find either a particular method of victory and or a particular round. But let's talk about how this fight's going to go, which is everybody's pretty clear on, okay? St. Denis is just going to put it on him for at least the first round or two. And if Denis cannot get him out of there, moicano has got five-round experience. Denis' uh, uh, cardio is semi-suspect. And moicano has got a much better shot. So what we cannot do is play Santini in either round one or two. So I'm sorry where I left it. So what you can only do is play Santini late or maybe Moicano early. So let's just take a look here. So Santini late, like by decision, unfortunately, is not big enough. So what we're going to have to do is probably get something in the later rounds if we want to do that. See, because you can even Moicano round one or two is not enough. So what we have to do is play Santini in one of these later rounds. And the only one that'll let you do it is in round four or five. Um, so what you're probably gonna also have to do is go for a complete winning method in which round and all of it. Um, so let's just take a look. So winning method, here we go. Santini TKO round four, sixteen hundred. But sub in round three plus twenty eight hundred, sub in round two plus fourteen hundred. That'll do it. All right, that's fine because that actually has a shot, and it'll get our money back, and we'll actually win a unit. 
So Santini by sub round two plus fourteen hundred. Let's go. So we're gonna put all this in once we log off. Again, I just donated twenty five hundred twenty dollars to the MMA gods just to teach you guys how to think contrarianly. That'll do it. Good luck, everybody.